Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of my December vlog style book haul where I will open packages as they arrive and we will also go over my stats for my own TBR as I am trying to read it down. I'm making some progress with my physical TBR, let's just ignore all of the digital things. I do have a few packages to open, but before we dive into that, let's take a look at where I am starting the month in terms of stats. As of December 1st, which is today, I have 191 books on my owned audio TBR, which is up 14 since the beginning of the year. So that, that has like, listen, the Black Friday sales, woohoo, baby. Especially because I kid you not, there's a series, an, a long series that I'm, I've read the first like three books in that I want to continue. I think I bought seven of those audiobooks because they were on sale for under four dollars. So anyway, audiobooks aren't doing great, but at least they don't take up any physical space. Ebooks have pretty much stayed the same throughout a lot of the year. I have 66 books on my own TBR, which is down one from the beginning of the year. And then in terms of physical books, we are at 444, which is down 44 from the beginning of the year. So I'm doing pretty well with my physical TBR. We'll see where I can get by the end of the year, and I will check back in at the end of the month to let you know how things are going. Today I have three packages to open. I have gifts from a patron, a pre-order, and some publisher mail. But let's start with the box that has gifts. I haven't looked at what the books are yet, but I, I did see the gift receipts. Now, if you saw my November book haul, you might remember where I was wondering if my patron Stephanie had in fact sent me even more books than what she sent me last month. They just hadn't arrived yet because of the numbering on some of the, some of the gift receipts. And in fact, that was the case because we have even more. Stephanie, oh my god. Um, thank you. I really I do appreciate this. So we have one of three. Can't stop. I think the second one, which came in last month's, was Won't Stop. And then Can't Wait for You to Read This. So I don't know which of these two books she can't wait for me to read, but let's see what we have. Oh, I think I know, actually. I think I know which one. Oh, okay. This is Yay! This is exciting. So she sent me this beautiful edition of Hyperion by Dan Simmons, which I have read many years ago, and I've wanted to revisit it at some point. It won the Hugo Award. This is considered a modern classic of science fiction. It's a space opera, and I think this is kind of a nice edition, big floppy paperback instead of one of those mass markets. So thank you. I'm very excited to have that on my shelves. And then she got me the Painted Devils by Margaret Owen, which is the sequel to Little Thieves, which I really loved. Pretty. Thank you. I do need to continue this series, and I feel like this is probably the one she was saying. She can't wait. So thank you so much, Stephanie. I so appreciate all of the books, and these are amazing. Next up, we have some publisher mail. This is from Simon & Schuster. I'm not sure what this is. I've said yes to a couple things in emails recently, so maybe it's something I'm expecting. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, yay! I did not know I was getting this. I'm so excited. Ah, yes! Yes! This is an advanced copy of The Angel of Indian Lake by Stephen Graham Jones. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this. This is the final book in the Slasher trilogy. It comes out March 26th, and Saga Press sent me an early copy. It's time to say goodbye to Jade Daniels. A terrifying conclusion to the series. Um, that is very exciting. The gripping finale. Okay, and it looks like this is set four years after the, the book that I just read, <laughs> Don't Fear the Reaper, and I, I don't know what's gonna happen. But I am so excited. Thank you so much to Saga Press for sending that along. That's very exciting. Lastly, we have <laughs> my latest very expensive purchase from Subterranean Press. They do fancy special limited editions of books and I, <sighs> you know, occasionally drop more money than I probably should on copies of books from my favorite authors. Um, and this was one that I just could not resist. 
They always package things really well, so they do not get damaged in transit, which I appreciate given given the price. So we're packing peanuts. Let's get this out of here. Oh my god. I can do it without getting the packing peanuts everywhere. Hold on. Okay, okay. Ah! Yes! Not too shabby. Alright. So it comes bubble wrapped. And then we have another layer of bubble wrap corners and plastic. So like they, nothing is going to happen to this beauty, which is so appreciated. Take these off and get the invoice out of here so I can show you what it is. Oh my goodness. This is exciting. Ooh. This is, it's always a very exciting, a very exciting day. When a subterranean press order arrives, I, yeah. Okay, hold on. This is, whoa, oh my God. The special edition of The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Oh my gosh, look at that artwork. In the back, you can see like the creatures and everything. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. I just, like, even though this is not my favorite book for her, she is one of my favorite authors. And I just, like, when I saw the artwork on this, I, I had, I had to, I had to. And it's this gorgeous, like, green teal cover. We have the end papers, which is perfect. There's, like, creatures hiding in the greenery. I don't know if you can see. Beautiful. They make these gorgeous, like, gorgeous cloth bound books. It is signed and numbered special edition limited to 500 numbered copies and 26 lettered copies and I have number 34. The typeset daughter of Dr. Moreau. Oh my gosh it's so beautiful. Wow okay and then I think there are some interior illustrations as well but like just look at that. I'm totally going to do a flip. Th oh my God. Oh my God. They have like art at the beginning of the chapters. Are they all different? This is gorgeous. Okay. So they're not different, but still like that is really pretty art. And then there is art inside too. Oh my, oh my word. Like, look at that. Look at that. It's so eerie and ethereal. I just, I don't know who they got to do this artwork, but it's stunning. <laughs> I am so happy I got this. Like, can it even tell you? Okay, and then I think there's one other piece of artwork inside, which is also really very cool. Wow. Wow. Oh, that is truly, it's truly a beauty. So that will be added to my Sylvia Miranda Garcia shelf. I also have their edition of Mexican Gothic, which is similarly really gorgeous. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're going to be doing a special edition of Silver Nitrate too, and I'm going to be so tempted to get it. Like these are not cheap, but they do hold up in terms of resale value because they're so limited, but it's, it's beautiful. Hey y'all, I have some books to share. I have a couple of things that came in my Secret Santa package. Last year I started running an optional Secret Santa for my patrons, which they really like, and so we did it again this year, and I participated, so I ended up with a couple of books from that. I got such an amazing package from my person that it was just really lovely and thoughtful, and even included some makeup items from a Black-owned small beauty brand that I've been using so that's been really fun but um two books so that's what we're talking about here first up ah oh, oh my god this beautiful special edition of the luminaries by Susan Dennard which I really liked Susan is one of my favorite authors this one has sprayed edges and um really beautiful end papers and like look at that oh my god it's so pretty and um it's signed so Yes, this is very exciting. I honestly am not 100% sure which edition this is. If you know, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But this is so beautiful. Thank you so much to Carissa for sending me this and everything else. I really appreciate it. And then she also got me a finished copy of one of my favorite books of the year, Outlaw Mage by K.S. Vioso. And not only that, oh my God, uh, signed and personalized. Hello. 
it's very exciting. I loved this. So this is a fantasy novel that's really great and it was self-published and done through a Kickstarter. So I had an advanced copy, which was really cool. I ended up loving it and I had been wanting to have a finished copy. So thank you so much to my secret Santa for the books and everything else that came in the really thoughtful package. That was super cool. It, it's always fun too to put things together. We have a budget and you know, it's fun. I also got a package. I tried not to look, but I did see there was a gift receipt in here. So somebody sent me a gift. Thank you. It's really sweet. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is from Brianna at Four Paws in a Book. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, so there's two books in here. Yay! <laughs> this is so exciting. Two more volumes of Yona of the Dawn. I am probably going to read them very soon because I um, I love these and I want to catch up. Volumes 10 and 11. Brianna, thank you so much. This is really sweet of you and um, I appreciate you a lot. So this is this is perfect. I'm slowly acquiring them so one day I'll get the the entire series. Oh, that's so nice. Very much appreciated. Hello, I have three packages to open. One of them I did kind of not look at, but saw that there were gift receipts. So I think a couple of these are gifts. And then I have an order from Pango Books that I bought using store credit. This is a book I have read previously, but I kind of want to revisit it and have it on my shelves. So it is Melting Stones by Tamara Pierce. This is set in the same world as the Circle of Magic books. And so I bought a couple of the books, later books in the series that I didn't own. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. It was very inexpensive and it's in pretty good condition and I used credit for it. So that's exciting. All right, then let me look at the gift receipts. Stephanie, oh my God. Okay, so Stephanie said, well, you did say you needed them for a challenge TBR. I have a feeling I know what these probably are because there was a series that I still needed to buy books for. Let's see if I'm right from my challenge TV. Yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is very exciting. But this is three out of the four books in the Rainwild Chronicles by Robin Hobb, which I am planning to read in 2024. Thank you so much. Also, they're so pretty. So City of Dragons. I love these covers. They're so kind of medieval looking. Dragon Haven and Blood of Dragons. Okay, they're kind of out of order, but okay, here we go. Book two, book three, book four. Stephanie, thank you so much. You are a gem and I greatly appreciate it. Oh my gosh, you do too much though. All right, let's open this and see. Okay, let's see. <laughs> what is this? Murder works well for Christmas, right? Right? <laughs> also from Stephanie. This feels like a hardcover, so I don't think it's what I was thinking. It must be something else. Did I even put the book one on my on my wish list? I might not have. I might have just put it in my cart. What did you do? Yeah. <laughs> yes, perfect Christmas gift. Thank you. <laughs> the Death I Gave Him by MX Liu. Thank you. So if y'all have like been closely following my my videos, you might know that I had had a copy of this that got damaged in transit and I've been looking to replace it and now I have it. I'm so excited. So this is like a sci-fi locked room murder mystery that is also loosely a take on Hamlet and I've been very interested to pick it up. So thank you so much, Stephanie. This was... Um, wow. Very, very thoughtful and kind of you. Uh, I do appreciate it. Oh my god. Yay! Okay, now I just need to go grab myself book one. Hello, I have some gift packages to open. I've got an order from Pango Books, and I have a couple of books that I purchased at an event that I went to, so we'll start with those. I got tickets to go see Neil Gaiman perform A Christmas Carol dressed as Charles Dickens in New York City. It was really cool. Thank you to Liana for putting it on my radar that this event was happening. It was amazing. He was so funny and engaging and it was a fantastic performance. And I had such a great night. I was there early and then there was somebody who I guess her and her husband had accidentally or somehow ended up with two extra seats 
in the front row and so they offered them to me and another person <laughs> so I got to sit in the front row which was amazing so anyway I went to this event and then they had signed books he wasn't signing and personalizing them there but still signed books he doesn't live here this was kind of exciting so I picked up two that I've already read my favorite of his, The Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I don't have this edition yet. I had been eyeing it because it's really, really pretty. It's an illustrated, like, special edition copy, and I just love this book so much. So I decided to go ahead and get a signed copy, and then I also picked up a signed copy of Coraline, which is also fun to have. And then I grabbed a book for Liana too, so, because she is a Neil Gaiman super fan. So very excited about that. Then I've got an order from Pingo Books, and I think this is a late in the series volume of Yona of the Dawn, but I basically just have a thing where I get an alert every time somebody posts something in the series and I'm just slowly trying to collect all of them because I want to read the whole series next year. And so this was super inexpensive and I had credit to use from selling books. So yes, this is volume 35. <laughs> <laughs> Which of course, like, I, the, I, I think I currently own through volumes 11, and now I also have 35, but it's okay. My goal is to, like, catch up with the series in 2024 and slowly acquire all of them. So I now have that. And then all the rest of this is, uh, like, a truly wild number of gifts from Stephanie, who has already sent me a lot of things. So, um... Stephanie, you are going really hard for the holidays, but thank you. I like, oh my God. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with the one that came in a separate package. And this says, Yona times four. I hope you get further in the series in 2024. Is this more Yona of the Dawn? Because I do want to get further in the series in 2024. Oh, wow. Also for like a manga volume, this is like an enormous gift bag. Oh, it actually has like, <laughs> this is, this. I've never seen one this big and in this design. Anyway. Um, okay. Oh, we have volume 14. Yes. That's so exciting. And I'm guessing there's going to be more Yona of the Dawn in this package. So I guess this is going to be a manga heavy haul. I love these covers. I love the story so much. It's like political fantasy romance and it's just fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephanie. This is really, really great of you. I might like repurpose some of those gift bags for the holidays. Everything else came in this enormous box. And I will, I am gonna tell you that unfortunately the one book that wasn't in a bag did get some water damage because the package was a little water damaged, but it's okay. I can exchange it because Amazon is pretty good about that. But this is Wrath by John Gwen, And I think there was a note with this that said something about finishing series in 2024, which is something I'm trying to do. And um, I have, I, I do want to continue with the series. I've read book one, I own book two, now I have book three. I think, oh no, this is book four. Is book three in here somewhere too? <laughs> okay, maybe you're, are you, <laughs> I feel like we're getting a hint of like, hey, here's another series to finish. I did, I, I did like book one, so I do want to keep going. So book four, Wrath by John Gwynn. These are like some chunky fantasy series. So um, unfortunately, this, this one got a little water damaged from the package because it's been raining here, but it's okay because I can exchange it and get a new copy. From what I could tell, I think everything in the bags is okay. I didn't look in, but I kind of like checked to see if anything got wet. So anyway, um, okay, so let's, everything, I think almost everything else might be in bags. I don't know. All right, let's open this one. What does this say? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Stephanie, you like <laughs> the, the author of the majority of the book haul for this month. I appreciate you a lot. You are, you're amazing. Um, okay. What? This is new. They're like actually putting stickers on it. Wow. Yay! Oh, this is so exciting. Um, I have, oh, I don't love that they're doing the stickers. They're sticking them onto the books. Why are they doing that? They should, 
Okay, so this is one of my favorite romances that I read this year. I had an eARC on NetGalley and I wanted to get a finished copy and now I have it. Thank you so much. Curves for Days by Laura Mower. This is a really great contemporary romance with a plus size main character and a plus size hero actually too. Both of them are plus size and I just love this so much. It's a slow burn and there's a lot of just emotional depth to the relationship between them. It was so so good and I'm really pleased to have a copy for my shelves. Thank you. Next! Oh my god, I feel like this is so much. Yona! Yes! More Yona! Okay. This is so exciting. Well, thank you, Stephanie. I am going to get further in the series in 2024, um, largely thanks to you getting me all these copies of it. That is amazing. All right, so this is Yona of the Dawn, volume 12. Yes! This is so exciting. There are so many volumes of it, but I'm very excited about it. I just can't like, oh my god, I didn't realize how many packages were in here. Like, I knew it was a big box, but geez. Okay, here's the next one. May 24 be the year of finishing series. Maybe this is book three in the Zhang Wen series? I don't know. It's certainly hefty enough. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes! Book three, Ruin by John Gwynn. Love it. Okay. Are you, are you telling me I need to get on this series? Apparently I need to get going with it. Okay, this says, Merry Christmas to your kiddos. Okay. Maybe this is something that like they could read too. Let's see. Yes! Okay. This is great. Um, this has been on my, on my list for a while. Superman Smashes the Clan by Jean Luen Yang, art by Guri Hiro. I heard really interesting things about this. The year is 1946. Teenagers Roberta and Tommy Lee just moved with their parents from Chinatown to the center of Metropolis, home to the famous hero Superman. Tommy makes friends quickly while Roberta pines for home. Then one night, the family awakens to find their house surrounded by the clan of the Fiery Cross. Superman leaps into action, but his exposure to a mysterious green rock has left him weak. Can Roberta and Tommy help him smash the clan? So apparently this is inspired by a 1940s Superman radio serial called Clan of the Fiery Cross. That is really interesting. So this is a YA graphic novel. Um, yeah, very interested in reading that. Thank you. That's exciting. Okay. I don't know what this is. What did you, oh my god. Another Merry Christmas to your kiddos. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Oh, yay. I think I know what this is. Okay, this is exciting. Yes. Okay, this is book two in a series that I did read book one to my kids, so this is ex this is awesome. This is Cameron Battle and the Escape Trials by Jamar J. Perry. I am really excited to have this. So this is middle grade portal fantasy, and it is written by a black gay author. And um, based on what I read in book one, there's like a very subtle possible crush situation happening between the main character and one of his best friends. So just seeing that kind of like in an appropriate, age appropriate way, normalized for middle grade readers, love. Thank you. Oh, and I guess I should say it's also got Igbo and other African mythology involved in it. And it kind of reads to me like a fantasy version of Black Panther. That's like, that's kind of how it, how it feels a little bit. It's fun. There's still like three more packages. Good Lord. Okay. Um, Oh, this is so nice. Thank you for all you do for your patrons. We appreciate you and the community you've brought together. Best wishes for 2024 and the merriest of holidays. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Stephanie, oh my god. This is like, this is amazing. Like, wow. Okay. <gasps> yes! Okay, I really, really want to read this book. It sounds so fun. Hold on. I'm, I'm like trying to get the stickers off. Okay. This just came out in December. Raiders of the Lost Heart by Joe Segura. Oh my god, it's like Indiana Jones, but a romance novel. And it's uh, Latine. 
and I'm so excited about this. Also the early reviews that I've seen for it are great. This sounds so fun. I really want to read this. Thank you. I'm so happy to have this. Yeah, rival archaeologists must team up on a secret Aztec expedition or it could leave their careers and hearts in ruins. I'm very excited to have this. That's exciting. That, that's amazing. Okay, I have a feeling both of the other two might be the other two. Yes, Yona of the Dawn, because there's four, four, four volumes of Yona you're getting me. Okay, so I think that's what these last two are, um, which is very exciting. I will now have several volumes of Yona that I can read. I'm so excited about it. Yes. Right. We have volume, th volume 13. And volume 15. That is uh, wild and amazing. Stephanie, thank you. You are. You've been incredibly generous this year and I, I appreciate everything that you do so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, look at all these books. Y'all. It's like, it's so many. It's so, it's like, it's so many books. Look at, look at that. It's just like, and, and then there's more. Okay. Um, thank you. That's... I, I don't know what else to say, but this is incredibly generous and I am really appreciative, truly. Okay, happy holidays, everybody. I'm sure I'll be back at some point, but uh, it's like so many books. Now I gotta go update all my spreadsheets. <laughs> Hello, it is the day after Christmas and I have not been on here for a minute and some things have been piling up so I thought I would share. I have kind of a range of things. I have a couple of gifts. I have an order that I placed with Pango Books with store credit. I have something that was sent to me for review so let's just go over it. We'll start with the Pango order. So this is another book that I have read before but I wanted to own a copy of and I found it and that is Will of the Empress by Tamara Pierce. Another book in the Circle of Magic series. So not in great condition, I'll be honest, but like, it's okay. So this I think is the first novel that takes place after the Circle Opens series. So at some point I would like to go back and reread this. I did read it a lot of years ago, but I don't remember much about it. Then I have a couple of gifts for Christmas. My spouse got me this really beautiful Folio Society edition of The Princess Bride by William Goldman, which I have also read, um, but this is so pretty. It's this really lovely illustrated edition. Very fancy. This was a really nice Christmas gift illustrations. Buttercup and Wesley, Prince Humperdinck. I haven't seen this movie in a long time. It'd be fun to go back and watch. Look at everyone! That's so fun. I feel like they definitely took some inspiration from the actors of the film, even though I'm pretty sure the book actually came out first, but it's definitely giving me film vibes. I love all the all the illustrations. This is so fun. I feel like I probably missed one towards the beginning. I'll have to look. Oh yeah, the rodents of unusual size. The machine. <laughs> Inigo Montoya. Or... Yeah, anyway, this was really, really nice. Such a beautiful gift and it comes with the nice slipcase. So that was really cool. The other gift I did open because I didn't know what it was. This is from Amanda, the naughty librarian. And she got me a copy of Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mirror, and she said she really loved it and hoped that I might like it as well. So thank you so much to Amanda. That was really nice. I have definitely heard like very mixed things about this. It seems like people are hit or miss with whether they're enjoying it, but the premise is fun. Assistant Wanted, notorious high-ranking villain, seeks loyal level-headed assistant for unspecified office duties, supporting staff for random mayhem and terror and other dark things in general. Discretion a must excellent benefits. And I think it's also a romance, so she's like falling for the villain. So I don't know. Interesting. And then lastly, I have a book that arrived that was sent to me for review. One of my kind of distant cousins, I don't know exactly what she is, because that's always confusing to me. Not a first cousin though. But I think her dad and stepmom 
write books together and they had a sci-fi book that they were wondering if I would be interested in so I was like yeah it sounds interesting send it along and I'll give it a try so this is Ascension Kalaya Unbound by V&D Poval. Kalaya Devona, born in the 680th cycle of the Talderon era, is a bewitching and formidable warrior and the most powerful weapon of Kronos Dukarion, supreme commander of the Alliance of Stars. Kalaya is a minder capable of influencing the thoughts of most species in the universe until now. The nightmare behind her eyes insists that she murdered Kronos, but she refuses to believe that the images of blood and violence are real. Anyway, it's supposed to be some kind of like a space opera type thing. I don't know exactly what to expect, but thank you so much to them for sending a copy and I will be reading this and checking it out. So full disclosure, I don't personally know the authors, but I do know their daughter and uh, that was how I got connected with this. So I don't take a whole lot of self-published titles for a review these days, but I am going to give this a try and I'll let you know what I think. And if you're interested, go check it out. I think they have a bunch of other books that they've written as well in a variety of genres. So link down below if you're interested. That is it. It is December 26th. I may be back with more books or you may just see me here to wrap up the video for the month. Hey everybody. So I am just gonna destroy most of my progress <laughs> on reading down my TBR this year right before the end of the year because of course I am. Um, maybe I'm slightly exaggerating but not as much as I want to be. Okay so I have a gift that arrived with no note, so I don't know who sent this. I hit up the Barnes Noble after Christmas hardcover sale and bought a stack of books. One of them is, I'm saying for my kids, so it's not going on my TBR, but but still, I I have other things. I have, I have lots of things. Let's, so, <laughs> because I was expecting something else and I didn't know what this was, I have already peeked. But somebody, thank you if you're watching this, because I don't know who it is, very kindly got me the next two books in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen series by Chaos Vioso, which I'm very excited about because I finally read the first one. It was fantastic. We have the Agasar Falcon and the Dragon of Jin Saying. Jin Saying. I think this is the entire series. One thing that is so unfortunate is the third book is not an audio. Books one and two are. Books, book three isn't. Why do they do this to us? Why do they do this? Anyway, regardless, very happy to have these. I do want to continue on with the series and I have loved everything I've read from Chaos Vioso. So thank you, mystery person who bought these from my wish list. I really appreciate it. Oh my God. Okay then, we have the Barnes and Noble haul. If you saw my short, you might already know what I got. But let's discuss. First is a book that I have actually read already. So this is not adding to my TBR. But it's a book that I loved and had been wanting a copy of. This is The Alchemy of Moonlight by David Ferraro. So pretty. This is a queer paranormal retelling of the mysteries of Udolfo. And I love it. I think it's so good. This is gonna be one of my highlights of the year that I'll be discussing in honorable mentions. It's really stuck with me. I did want a physical copy. Barnes and Noble was doing 33% off hardcovers. Plus I could stack 10% off with my membership discount. Plus I had $15 of rewards points. I had a $5 gift card I had somehow acquired. So like I, I did pretty good considering. And the key is I went in with the list and I stuck to the list. There were two books that I went in looking for that they didn't have, so I didn't pick those up, and uh, maybe I'll pick them up at some point in the future, but everything else on my list they had and I picked it up and I didn't get anything else, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Anyway, so Alchemy of Moonlight, She is a Haunting by Trang Than Tran, and it's a signed edition, which is cool. Yay! This is queer YA horror that I have heard really good things about. I read a short story from this author in a collection as well and I really enjoyed it so I was interested in picking up her novel. I don't really know what it's about specifically. This house eats and is eaten. When Jade Nguyen arrives in Vietnam to visit her estranged father, she has one goal, survive five weeks pretending to be a happy family in the French colonial house Ba is restoring. She's always lied to fit in, so if she's straight enough, Vietnamese enough, American enough, she can get out with the college money he promised. But the house has other plans. Night after night, Jade wakes up paralyzed. The walls exude a thrumming sound while bugs leave their legs and feelers in places they don't belong. She finds curious traces of her ancestors in the gardens when they once tended. And at night, Jade can't ignore the ghost of the beautiful bride who leaves cryptic warnings. Don't eat. 
<laughs> sounds really good. So I've heard good things about it. It's been on my interested list for a while. So I picked up a copy at the sale. I also grabbed Heroes of the Water Monster by Brian Young. This is the second book in a series. I read Healer of the Water Monster. This was our Patreon book club pick for middle grade March this year and I really liked it and I wanted to continue on with it. And yeah, so this is book two. I don't know exactly what this follows. Edward feels ready to move in with his dad's girlfriend and her son Nathan. He might miss having his dad all to himself, but even if things in their new home are a little awkward, living with Nathan isn't so bad. And Nathan is glad to have found a new guardian for Dew, the young water monster who's been Nathan's responsibility for the last two years. Um, so anyway, there's it's also passing this on to a younger kid, indigenous kind of fantasy with dealing with a lot of more serious issues. Really like the first one. Then the book that I'm saying I bought for my kids because I want to read it to them because I really loved the first one and they did too. Shinji Takahashi Into the Heart of the Storm by Julie Kagawa. I loved Shinji Takahashi and the Mark of the Quaddle. It was so much fun. It kind of gives you Indiana Jones vibes but without the colonization problems and it's it's just it's really good really fun series and I am excited that we have book two so at some point this will probably be a read aloud kids get to pick though we're currently I mean, we're getting close to the end actually but we're currently doing Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky which I've read before it's a reread for me and then I don't know what we're reading next but this is gonna go on the bookshelf for the kids. I got Rosewood, A Midsummer Meat Cute by Sayantani Dasgupta. This is one that I also was really interested in. It sounded cute and the reviews look fun. It is a contemporary retelling of Sense and Sensibility by a Bengali author and I just think it sounds adorable. I am a sucker for a Jane Austen retelling and this one piqued my interest. All right, two more. First, I grabbed The St. Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward, also known as J.R. Ward. I have not actually read J.R. Ward before, but this, like this cover, this looks like a me cover. <laughs> I feel like this. And then reading the premise, I was like, okay, this, this is like my trope candy. I feel like I'm gonna love this. Heathers meets the secret history in this thrilling coming of age novel set in a boarding school where the secrets are devastating and deadly. Y'all, it's like mean girls but dark academia. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I hope it's as good as I want it to be, but I, it's, I, I keep noticing it every time I go into a bookstore and I finally was like, hardcover sale. We're grabbing a copy. And then finally I picked up the book that got voted on for our, what is it? The February book club for patrons and channel members in 2024, The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzon. This is a fantasy romance and oh wow, look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is beautiful. The fates of two bitter enemies with opposing magical abilities are swept together in the Hurricane Wars, the spellbinding debut in a fantasy romance trilogy set in a Southeast Asia-inspired world ravaged by storms, perfect for fans of Sarah J Maas and R.F. Kuang. Very interesting. So we're going to be reading that for book club in February and I grabbed a copy. So those are the seven books <laughs> that I bought at the Barnes and Noble sale, but five of them are getting added to my TBR, which is already kind of a lot. Then a few years ago, we started celebrating Kwanzaa with our kids, which has been kind of cool. I don't know if you're at all familiar, but there's a different principle for each of the seven days. And so for today, the principle is Ujima, which I hope I'm saying right, I think I am, but it means cooperative economics. And so we've been doing different activities around one of the principles with the kids every day. And so for today, we went on a trip out into our city. We live in New York City to go and visit a couple of black owned businesses, one of which is a bookstore that I have been wanting to visit for years now. And because it's kind of far and out of my way, I haven't had the chance to, I can't believe I still haven't. I kept, there were times that I meant to, I was going to go to a thing and then I got sick. Anyway, the point is finally all went up to the lip bar in the Bronx, which is gorgeous. It's this really cool bookstore. I actually made a short of our outings. So I will post that here. <laughs> Thank you. 
everybody in the family picked up a book and I got one as well which was really fun and the book that I grabbed was When the Vibe is Right by Sarah Das. I really loved her debut novel. So her debut was set in Trinidad and it was a retelling of Persuasion and I thought it was really great. So I was interested in picking this one up. There are two things Tess Crawford knows for sure. She's destined to be a great carnival costume designer like her renowned uncle Russell Messina and will one day inherit leadership of the family's masquerade band, Grandeur. Her classmate Brandon Richards, a popular social media influencer, is the bane of her existence. Everything about him irks her, from his annoying nickname for Tess, Boop, to his association with David, her awful ex. But when the future of grandeur nears the brink of collapse in the face of band rivalry, Tess finds to her chagrin that she must team up with Brandon in a desperate attempt to revive the company. Again, set in Trinidad, so a YA contemporary romance. Picked that up, which was really fun. Lastly, we've got two packages to open. I've got something from Macmillan unusual to be getting something from Tor. This is probably a Tor book uh, so close to the end of the year. And then I have something from an author who had reached out to me. So let's open the Tor package first. Yay! Okay, this is exciting. Um, I, I did know that I was getting this, but I didn't expect it so soon. Okay, this is very exciting. Y'all know I am a sucker for a good cozy fantasy, and this is a sapphic cozy fantasy, Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne, the first book in the Tomes and Tea series. So this was an uh, indie published book that has gotten picked up for traditional publication by Bramble, so Tor's ro new ro fantasy romance and sci-fi romance imprint. In the tradition of legends and lattes comes a cozy fantasy steeped in sapphic romance about one of the queen's private guards and a powerful mage who want to open a bookshop and live happily ever after, if only the world would let them. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I love a cozy fantasy. So thank you so much to Tor for sending me a copy. This comes out in May of 2024 for traditional publication, but you can already get the ebook version if you want to. And then lastly, there is an author who had self-published a short story collection a few years ago that I reviewed and I loved it. I still have it on my shelves actually. It's really good. Um, but he reached out to me because apparently a small publishing company has picked it up for a new release and asked if he could send me a copy. I guess there's a couple of new stories in the book, That's, but this is so exciting. Also, this package came all the way from Jakarta. So thank you so much to Dimas for sending me this. I like I didn't expect to be getting like a personalized package like this. This is really cool. So you really should go and check this out. Um, this is so cool. Okay. It got here quick too. This, oh, okay. It's a bag. It's a bag. Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh. There's so many layers. Oh my goodness. Look at that. It's so pretty. Oh, this is really nice. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me see if I can get this off without like destroying it. So for reference, this is a collection of horror short stories and it was on my list of best horror of the year that I read it and it was self-published and I thought really impressive for a debut. This is so, so nice. Oh my gosh. Look at this. This is so nice. Thank you. Dear Bethany, have a beautifully bookish, spooky good time. <laughs> Tima <Team> Srio. <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Okay, so let's open it and see the lovely new cover who will join its predecessor on my shelves. I am also really interested to check it out with the couple of new stories that have been, that have been added because the originals were really good. So there are horror short stories based on Indonesian mythology, which is very cool and really interesting. Okay, forget it. The paper, I can't, I can't keep the paper in good condition. All right, here we go. It's very well wrapped, but it came in great condition, so I'm very impressed. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's such a creepy cover. That's good. I mean, the original was creepy too. So the original he like did himself. Who's There? Terrifying Tales by Dimas Rio. I think this is so great. Oh my gosh. This is so exciting. Oh, this is so nice. Um, wow. Like, it's sign. This is really sweet. 
I appreciate it. Okay, so Velox Books is publishing this. Uh, drawing on local folk tales of vengeful banshees, dusk-dwelling monsters, ghouls hiding in the woods, and other forms of the undead, this collection transports listeners to the darkest abyss where demons forever reside, the human mind. <laughs> Ghostly tales of revenge, greed, and desperation writhe and squirm in the dark corners of modern-day Indonesia. Rich in cultural undertones that are uniquely Asian combined with classic horror, these stories are equal parts grotesque and poetic irreverent and spiritual, unusual and universal. Yeah, 100%. Really loved this collection. So excited for the author that we've got a new edition of it. I think that's amazing. And thank you so much for sending me this lovely package. That was really, really sweet. So definitely go check it out if you haven't heard about it before. I think it's a fantastic collection and something a little bit different than what you've maybe picked up before if you're into horror. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. This like could have been a whole video on its own with how long this was. Um, <laughs> should I end it here? Should I end the I feel like maybe maybe we should end the vlog here. It is officially the 29th. I do not anticipate any more books coming in in the next two days. I don't plan to go buy anything. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I haven't added all of these to my TBR yet though. <sighs> oh my god. It's like, it's so painful. Maybe I should wait till the very end of the year because I might be able to knock a couple things off of my TBR before the year is over. So we're not gonna do it quite yet, but I will say that this added nine books to my physical TBR, which is a lot, but I'm very excited about all of these books. I will be back when it is officially the end of the year to wrap things up and tell you my final numbers. Wish me luck. Let me see if I can knock a few things off the TBR <laughs> in the next two days. Okay, bye. It is January 2nd, so I'm just doing this as a voiceover. Here is where I ended up at the end of the month. I had 187 audiobooks on my audio TBR. This was up 10 from the beginning of the year, but down four from the beginning of the month. So I actually made some progress there. I also made a little bit of progress with ebooks. I ended up at 65, which was down two from the beginning of the year. But surprising no one, my physical books did not fare nearly as well. We ended the year at 455 books on my physical TBR, which is down 33 from the beginning of the year. Although I will say at least at least I ended up with less books than I had at the start. So we're moving in the right direction, even if I didn't get as far as I was hoping to. Um, this haul was wild. I was laughing because I wore the same outfit several times. And also Stephanie, holy shit. <laughs> like, you've been giving me so many books, but I, I'm, I'm very appreciative, but also it's so many books. So, you know, if I didn't do better on my, my read what you own challenge, blame Stephanie. It, you can just say it's her fault. Um, and the Barnes and Noble sale. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on this video. And for question of the day, let me know how you did with reading challenge you ha challenges you had for the year. Were you trying to read down your TBR? Did you have other challenges you were trying to meet? How did it go for you? I feel like this was moderately successful. I like I at least got it down, even if it wasn't as low as I was wanting. So we'll see what I can do about that in 2024. Happy New Year, everybody.